Today I'm driving a 2001 Pontiac Grand Prix GTP Special Edition. Let's go for a ride. Right, guys I'm in my buddy's 2001 Pontiac Grand Prix GTP special edition what makes this special I honestly don't know uh, I'm not uh, an expert on Pontiacs uh, nor am I an expert on the Grand Prix but uh, I do know that these things came with a, a limited edition rear seat uh, it was a two-toned uh, black and a dark gray except my buddy's uh, back seat got battery acid all over it so he, uh, he got rid of it and this it for a, a black seat. But what can I tell you about this car? Brakes are actually not half bad for a 2001. And these are OEM style brakes. So you know what, they're pretty good. He has premium wheels by Ultra uh, or premium lightweights. I can't remember what they're called. It's running 245 hand cooks all the way around. It's all disc brakes. The boys also got the 3.8 liter supercharged V6 by General Motors. I'm trying to make sure I don't get run into. But this isn't the factory supercharger. He had the factory one on it, but then he was later able to find one, uh, another factory supercharger that had been polished and ported. So it makes that much more horsepower. How much horsepower? On top of that, he has a full exhaust system. He's got headers from Speed Daddy and a full cat back from ZZP. And there's one thing you'll notice about this car, besides this awkward beeping, there are ZZP stickers everywhere on this car. And I mean everywhere on this car. On his dash, his windows, there's probably some spots that I haven't even found that they're hidden in. of the supercharger is so addictive. I think to me, just any supercharger wine can get addictive. I mean, I drive a supercharged uh, vehicle myself, so that's probably just my bias coming into play. But you can't deny that the wine of a supercharger just sounds so good and so aggressive when put into the right car. This car also has electronic gauges uh, right here on the A pillar. You can't see them, but I'm able to cycle through and I can count my misfires, I can count the coolant temp, how much boost I'm making. It's a three pod pillar, but it only has two gauges. So what do you put in the third spot? A stuffed banana. A Rasta stuffed banana. Cause why not? The boy has also put 20% window tint all the way around. So it's a little bit darker, not pushing you no know, too dark though, but it still looks really good. The boy has also made uh, custom grill pieces all by himself that was just in his garage. And you know what? They look pretty damn good for this car. I'm not gonna lie. He also has LED taillights in the back along with a little bit of dip on the trunk. The taillights look pretty good. I'm not sure how I feel about the dip, but it doesn't necessarily look bad. It just helps it stand out and look different. So at least I can find him in the parking lot. He also used to have halos up front, but the brackets were a little small, they would bounce around, they had some wiring issues, so it just ended up uh, taking them out all together. Still had them, they still look really good when they were in the car, it's just technical issues, no, they don't help out. But going back to why this is a special edition, I really honestly can't say, but you'll notice that on the doors right here, that there are little badges that say special edition GP. And again, I don't know what makes this thing so special, but to him, it's a really special car. And I can appreciate that, because if so long as you love your car, no one can tell you any differently. It's a good car. Woo! Stairs a little light. No, there's a little bit of play. Brakes aren't that bad. Suspension, pretty darn smooth, I'm not gonna lie. It definitely rides better than mine. Pretty sure he's just riding on factory suspension right now. And you know, it's not that harsh. It's not necessarily like the 
like the stiffest so if you take a corner you're not gonna feel like really really planted but the car is heavy and low enough to where there's not a lot of body roll and that's not that bad but these w body designs man i mean general motors use them for everything in their old mobiles the impalas from chevrolet obviously the grand prix and the grand ams from pontiac and they're just everywhere just because it was a really solid body style that doesn't necessarily mean that it was the best looking body style but it worked for General Motors and when something works you don't pass it up you, you work with it because it's successful this exhaust note my dude I mean for like a full cat bag with mufflers it sounds really solid it's quiet enough where if you're just idling, you don't notice anything, but the instant you floor it, it's there and you can just hear it and it sounds so good, especially with the headers on this. The funny story about his exhaust, when he was running the factory uh, exhaust setup, it was way louder and way drawnier. We, we were never really able to figure out why until he switched out for the cat bag and we noticed that he had two huge holes rusted through his mufflers. And we're talking like half the muffler was basically gone. It was like, you know what? That could be where that loud noise is coming from. He's also switched out the needles on all of his gauges up front. And they look pretty clean, the glow and everything. He has 155,000 miles on this. So if that doesn't tell you anything, which it really doesn't in my opinion, He's had this car for quite a while. This is actually his second Grand Prix. First one was just this regular old Grand Prix and it was just a piece of garbage. He sold that to his buddy and him and his parents were able to go in and get this. And he's had it for, I think, three years now. And it's just been a really good car to him. He uses it as his daily driver. He's taking it on road trips. And best part is he uses it as his delivery vehicle for when he delivers for Jimmy John's. So when your race car is both a delivery car and your daily driver, you know you're winning at life. That or you're just really sad, I'm not sure which. A Little bit of squealing. There's not a whole lot of low end torque. And what I mean by that, it doesn't, like when you floor it, it doesn't kick in and throw you back in the seat. It's really gradual throughout the power band. Which honestly doesn't feel that bad. Some people might not like the instant torque where it just throws you back and just jolts. This gradual increase in power feels really smooth. And I think that's a really good part of this car is that the power band in this thing is really linear. How much power does he make? We don't know. How much torque does he make? Again, we don't really know. We've never had it on the dyno. He also has a new head unit and he also used to have two subs in the back. And then those broke, and then he switched them out for his new set of subs. And I play some music, but I'm already using my phone to record. Woo! He also has an aftermarket hood, as you can probably tell. It's all black, it has a scoop and cowl. I'm, I'm not sure how, if I described that properly. But he has hood pins in the front but uh, he also has the uh, factory hood latch with it. So it's just a lot of security for the hood, I guess. But it doesn't look that bad. Granted, it is scratched up, but if you're just staring at it from a distance or looking at it in the dark, you can't really tell. There was one point where this engine kept getting misfires and misfires and misfires, and we could never really figure it out. So he has gone through, I think, two or three sets of uh, coil packs. And it was always misfiring on him. We even chased out spark plugs and everything. We could never figure out why. I'm pretty sure that he's figured it out at this point because I'm not reading any misfires. But hey, this is still his baby and he loves it. What you guys can't see is that he's, there's still just a ton of stuff just in his glove compartments and everywhere. Like when I told him that I was coming over to review his car and we were making plans, like give me like about an hour or so so I could clean out the interior and polish uh, my supercharger to get everything cleaned up. Because believe me, if you saw before this video, it was horrendous. The whole back seat was just covered with junk. And you couldn't sit anywhere back there. You had to shove everything to one side and you couldn't see a damn thing. He also has a really nice sunroof up here so I can stick my arm through and wave at people. 
might be wondering if he's ever raced this car. And you know what? He has. And I've been in this car when he's racing, and it is no slouch. This thing will fly if it wants to. And with the exhaust and the ported uh, supercharger, definitely help out. Is, does it still need a good tune? Probably. But it runs perfectly fine right now, so there's no need for him to get it to. It's just a basic daily street car for him. And that's good enough for most of us. Especially when we're young like he is, and he's just working a part-time job and just trying to pay for an apartment. A car like this is a good car. I'd like to thank you all for watching this little car review video. This is the second one I've ever done. If you like what you saw, go ahead, click subscribe, the like. You can leave a comment of what you thought of this car. If you'd like to see me do more of this kind of stuff, or not, or if you got a car that you would like me to review, hit me up, leave it in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. See ya, bronies.